Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Maloney. How are you doing, baby How boy? I'm I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks for inviting me on your podcast. No problem. How is life over in Sweden? Fucking all right, man. So it comes with its own set of caveats, but at least a man can go for a pint down the pub. Even though closing time's at eight. Yeah. And it's not all about the pints, Morris. You know what I mean? It's snowing. Lads can slide down hills in cold bags 24-7, never begging for a rain check. So it's all good from Diego to the Bay, as MC Hammer would have once said. Well, there's nothing much going on over here, as I, I'm sure you know, anyway, and not for a long time. Yeah, it's like one big concentration camp there, isn't it? You're just like, yeah. you're, you're not allowed in or out. It's, uh, you're, it's an island. It basically turns into Battle Royale soon. But it's, it gone be very, like... it's gone very North Korea over here at the moment, to be honest. Yeah, mate. You've got your, uh, you got your, your propaganda. You've got all that stuff. I had to grow a beard like Ian Beale all the time. He was homeless, so uh, just to blend in. So, yeah, it's um, it's it's shy crack beyond shy crack. Feel sorry for everyone fucking hemmed up. There's just so many inconsistencies to the whole thing. You know, it's uh, it, it's I I'd say the best way of summing it up in a soundbite is it's quasi bollocks. You know what I mean? And there's there's a virus out there, but uh, the way it's been handled is. I reckon there's a lot more behind the scenes, but look, I'm basically, there's a lot of knobheads out there who I would consider as coincidence theorists, so they'd be like, what does he know? Ooh. But I just have to say, they're fucking... Do you know what I mean? God love them. And forgive me for using that expression, but it is an expression that sums up the mentality of people in the 21st century. I mean, Jesus, you know, you think back to 10 years ago, you'd be like, wow, the, the mid, the, you know, the beginning of the the tens decade, let's say, flying cars, mad shit, enlightenment, but it just seems that people are just turning into absolute fucking idiots, man. And I seen a guy the other day was wearing he was wearing a mask, walking down the street, and it was like a, in a wooded lane. And the same guy would probably walk into a pub and take the mask off, but then going out into the street with the fresh air, no mask, or the mask on. There's a few uh, hidden agendas, I think, in especially in this country anyway, because I, I normally work in bars and I, I know guys that work in a few of the big bars and clubs in Ireland. And I also work at a shop. So a manager of a, a bar, it's a big, big bar and nightclub in Ireland. He said to me that at the moment they're using the virus to change the drinking culture in oh, Ireland yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and even from me working in the shop now, they brought in this new law a few weeks ago that you can't have, say, six cans for a tenner. You're not allowed <laughs> multi-boys and you have to hide the spirits all behind closed doors now. So you can't see them when you walk into the shop, kind of like the cigarettes. So I think they're using it to kind of push through these things. Like we had the HSE in our shop a few weeks ago, who yeah. you think would be really, really busy making sure that all the spirits were hidden and all the cans weren't six for a tenner. But what we done was the cans were six for a tenner. Yeah. So we dropped the cans to 167, which works out at six for a tenner. I, I like, you know, I like what you guys have done. There's always, there's always a workaround. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? I, I think if, if people want to go and drink, because at the moment, shit is just so mind numbingly depressing, boring, and the fu- there, there is no future. The, you know, there's, there's nothing worse than indefinitely... I mean, a friend of mine had a massive, very successful company in Sweden. He's fucking lost everything. The poor guy, man. I'm just, I was fucking gutted for him. And uh, he's just one of many. How many other people? A bit like, you're talking businesses going bust, left, right and centre. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, man. And, it, and what, what's more heartbreaking is the fact that mainstream media is being used to bludgeon people's fucking heads in. It's, it's gaslighting. It's... I, I've actually come to the conclusion that basically there's only a certain amount of people in the world born with the ability to see the big con from the educational system in the beginning to the sets of hurdles you have to arbitrarily overcome to be validated. Alan Watts, the philosopher, um, he uh, he mentioned this 
in something that he called the game of life, where when a child is born, it's, you know, you're well, rather than saying to the child, welcome to, welcome to, you know, humanity. It's you are a candidate for humanity. And then you're being, you're talked down to the whole time instead of being equally valued as everyone else, you know, and, and I think the educational system is flawed. I think the food we eat is, is poison to a certain degree. You know, we don't know what's in it. Pesticides, crops, uh, or GMOs and, and uh, you know, yeah, lasagnas, <laughs> finders. Now, without going too, without, without going too serious, man, I was just looking around and I'm like, where the hell, where, where's everyone's cop on? Like that dude I was telling you who's just wandering around a, a forest wearing a mask by himself. I'm like, that's the kind of guy who could, he, like, could he be trusted in a crisis situation? <laughs> I wouldn't think so. No, and and it's a it's a good thing really because the the, the people who are acting really over uh, emotively and and they're overreacting, these are the zealots to watch out for, man. You know what I mean? Like these, uh, God love them. It's just go outside, man. Have a walk, paint a picture, just get busy, get creative. But I think I think one of the you know the human body reacts to rejection the same way it does as physical pain. If you stop people from meeting each other, they're going to start getting depressed. Suicides are through the roof. No one gives a fuck, man. No one's talking about this. And, and uh, what pisses me off, right, is you have these agendas that are coming top down. And I'd say through the UN. The UN is, is, is I've, I've come to this conclusion lately. And, and that, look, if people think that I'm talking shite, let them have that opinion, man. Because as a comedian, I'm all about observation. I watch people. Hardy Books was that. It was a cross-section. It was the most accurate cross-section of small-town uh, rural Irish life that has ever been, that has ever come out. It succinctly uh, managed to crystallise the life of young men who were trapped like caged tigers with, you know, the frustration of wanting to do better, but the the the, the, the world around them has, has failed them to a certain extent, right? So this is, this is, pure observation i'm observing this and i'm thinking the un is basically the central nervous system let's say it's the brain uh, and each nation basically takes the message from the headquarters of the un or whoever's in charge of that and disseminates these instructions globally and if you look into the origins of the united nations john d rockefeller who the rockefellers are pretty fucking nefarious uh, gang of people was the one who gave them the land in the 50s so it's like it just takes a little bit of of looking a little bit of just a couple of google searches and you're away with it you know what i mean but that's my opinion i, th I think uh, people need to wake the fuck up and wake up quick for uh for the they, they turn the screws on this what do you think yourself yeah i think like yourself like there is a lot of um hidden agendas in it like i believe like the virus is real and everything like that do you believe it came from a lab in Wuhan? I don't know about that because Wuhan are just living a normal life now, aren't they? Hmm. Which is uh But what about all these twenty eight days later style leaked videos that were coming out where it's like three mile queue down into the ER fucking you know, I, I, I of course I was I thought I was well ahead of the curve when all that came out and I was like, shit, this has come to Europe and everyone's like, You're talking shit. And then it's it's in Europe now, the same people who I said then I was saying, like, this is coming to Europe. And they were like, oh, it's another one of those conspiracy theories. Now I'm saying, hang on a minute, shit's opened up in, in China. Don't know, man. A lot, a lot of weird shit going on in the world. But as the old Chinese proverb says, it wasn't, it wasn't a proverb. It was more like a kind of a slight, a slight kind of dig. It was, may you live to see interesting times. <laughs> and fuck me, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Yeah. In happier times, then we'll we'll get out of the dark world that we're we're in now, and we'll rewind a little bit. To obviously, we'll start with the Hardy books. Yes. And how did the idea come about? Was it your idea? It was a. Uh, I suppose myself and Chris Tordoff had I wanted to do a comedy. I suppose if I if I go even back further, I, I used to sit in school in class and marvel at the genius of of uh, Father Ted. I was like, wow, three priests living on an island with a housekeeper. And they, I was like, how do you top that as a concept? So uh, that was that was something I always used to think of. And uh, I always wanted to get into comedy. Um, and 
you know, I went to college in Ballyfermot. It didn't really feel like I'd, it was the wrong course. I didn't, it didn't do anything for me. I thought it was going to be like Van Wilder's fucking... What was, what was the name of Van Wilder? Party Liaison. liaison. Party Liaison officer, or even to a lesser extent, Van Wilder 2, Rise of Taj. It was neither of them. Nor was it American Pie 3. And that was... That, they were the shits and giggles I was looking for in my late teens, early 20s. But uh, no, I was just like, this, this was shit, man. And I went off traveling. I came back and Todd had gone. He, he started doing the film or the TV course in Bally Firm. He was like, Martin, do you want to do, uh, do you want to do like just you, just do some like characters in front of a camera? And I'll edit them together and make them look all oh, nice. Because we did a couple of other videos before that, but it was just like him uh, when he was over here in Stockholm and he cut them together and he had a great knack, a great eye for, for detail. So we did this thing called The Tale of a Hardy Book, which was me sitting in his Mars kitchen. And I was just, I picked up this like stepper and a gas barrel. I was just, at, you know, improvising. And uh, yeah, it took off from there. And so it was kind of like, it was an amalgamation of that. Like, my character was basically, there was a bit of my dad in there, a couple of lads I was in school with and just general things I picked up along the way. And then it just went from that snowboard. Then a couple of lads from, from Ballyferma College got involved. I was living with Owen and I was hanging out with Tom and, and Pete. In Galway, they're old mates of mine. And then I said, lads, you're funny bastards. Like, you should you should be in this. And uh, the rest is history, Maurice. The rest is history. Are you surprised at how popular it became? You know what? I'm not, to be quite honest. I know that might sound a bit arrogant, but when we, when we filmed the demo, the second one that was released a year later on, on YouTube. First of all, like the cuts were a bit too long. And then my, uh, my brother-in-law's mate, Martin O'Shea, was like, shite shite the fucking fan of funny fucking shite and like he, he's, he had a background in you know managing you know quite well known English bands and whatnot. and my brother in law was like yeah mate it's a bit long it's a bit flabby Cuts, just fucking cut, cut all the chaff off so Chris went back and he, he re-edited it and then when I seen the edits come back I was like yeah this is great I remember me and PJ plays French Toast we were standing outside uh, the A and they were in visiting someone in the hospital in the Castle Bar and we met these two girls outside and, and they were like just chatting away to them, having a ciggy or whatnot. And then we said, yeah, we, we, we've started doing a, we've, we've done a TV show series that'll be as popular as, as Father Ted. And they were like, yeah, good luck with that. And then funny enough, like on that lad Bible or whatever, it was a uni lad or one of these Irish things on Irish version of them. It was like, it came second place to Father Ted in, in the competition of like great ultimate Irish TV shows. And we're like, Father Ted, man, it's, uh, you, you know, you're not going to beat that. But second, I'll have that. And I think it was pretty close as well, wasn't it? Mm. She was close enough, yeah, as far as, as far as I'm aware, yeah. yeah. So are you going to ask me about Seamus the Wrestler? Yes, <laughs> I suppose I better know <laughs> that you brought it up, even though I asked you. You might so, as well. So uh, Seamus the Wrestler, have you met him yet in person? I spoke to him briefly on Skype about, I think, seven or eight years ago. His, his manager, Ray Sr., I uh, was hanging out with Carm Nader, you know, from California. I was there yeah. having a couple of pints with the boys. And we're having a nice little uh, Thai green curry somewhere up on Camden Street. And uh, your man, Ray, his phone goes off. And he, and he goes, here, here, speak to this lad here. It was uh, Seamus. And I remember looking at the front camera, at how rough I looked and how fresh he looked. And he was over in America driving around. And it was like daylight. And he was like, all right, fella. And I was like, hey, at least we're... At least we're not the same person. That that's a relief. I thought maybe we were cloned or something, and you were doing a fair bit better than me. So, uh, but apparently, like he, he was saying, man, <laughs> he goes, I was walking down, uh, I was walking down Grafton Street there a few months ago, and there was everyone was going Eddie Dark and Eddie Dark and shouting at me. <laughs> so uh, there was another lad who was, uh, I, th- I think, the culminate was telling me that he was going, yeah, everyone was calling him Eddie, shouting Eddie, Hardy books at him. So uh, he was on the Late Late Show, and I remember my uncle, my uncle Martin, my mum's brother, was like, "Did I was that you on the Late Late Show the other night?" It's like, yeah, and I've fucking been lifting, man. Been doing a fair bit of lifting since. It's like I'm a big, big unit, man. Actually, same thing happened to me out in. I was, I was on, a, I was on the honeymoon a couple of years ago, and I was in a place called Cozumel in Mexico, and uh, I met, meet this Mexican guy, and he goes, uh, "Hey, man." Are you Seamus the wrestler, dude? And I was like, nah, I'm his cousin. No way, man. Nah, nah, nah. He goes, yo, dude, you buy me a, buy me a can of Coke? I'm like, yeah, all right. 
So I just bought my can of Coke. I got myself a Fanta. Hey, thanks, Essie. And then I go, so what's the story here, man? How was it like living down here in, in Mexico? Like, did you ever get depressed? Depressed? What is this, man? I was like, you know, he's feeling a bit fucking shit, like. No. I was like, fair enough. Fair bit of vitamin D down there, like. So that was my shame as a wrestler crack. The, uh, the, 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 what do you make of the difference between the stuff you guys put on YouTube and then would say the last series that came out on RT, which do you obviously prefer? Oh, yeah, what mate, we had, doing we had yourselves? a wing. Yeah, of course we do, man. Yeah. We had a wings clip big time because series three we went a little bit off piste and uh, there, was a, there was a fair few fucking feathers ruffled. And uh, people, a couple of unnamed producers, let's say, weren't happy. So uh, they, they put the mockers on us for Series 4. And, uh, yeah, but look, you know what? I'm thinking about fucking you know, having another go. Because I think, Pete, man, everyone's on about like when Series 5 coming out. And I think I think it's high time, baby boy. We've got to do this shit. You know, and do, you just, reckon, do you reckon you'll do it yourselves? Or do you reckon you'll do it with RT? Like, or? Oh, we'd have to do it with RT. I mean, who, like, how, how else are we... Just the idea of having to raise money. I mean, who's got it these days? Do you know what I mean? And if someone makes a series, you know, who's who's going to put up, let's say, half a million minimum to make a series? What are they going to get out of it unless it's some sort of, like, millionaire who basically uses it as a vanity project tax break? And we're like, all right, fucking hell, man. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, Sterling, the football player, or someone you're like, yeah, Sterling, lost those a few quid. Yeah, so I don't know. We will see, but um, I reckon, I reckon, RT is probably the way to go. I mean, like, you know, th- th- I think we have an obligation to cheer the country up. To be honest with you. Yeah. Get Brian yeah, I had, in the mix. Yeah, I, I had Cowboy on the podcast there a couple of months ago, and he was saying that there's a. Uh, oh, very there's good. A, yeah, there was a load of footage he said out there. And he didn't say who had it, but he said there's a load of footage out there and that was recorded that didn't make the last series that he said somebody has it and he'd like to see it go online. Yeah, I actually, I have a, I have a, big, I have a fucking G-Raid hard drive, whatever they're called, that has a lot of rushes on it. But man, it just means someone's like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's on there, but time, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it'd be unrendered. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, there's enough to clip something together out of it, but it's just basically a man's going to have to sit through all these rushes and, you know, how do you weave a narrative out of it? You know, like, it'd just probably be a compilation of outtakes, really, or yeah. if there's enough on there. I mean, I, I haven't looked. I must check it out. But, yeah, there's definitely stuff you could do. I mean, maybe a re-edit of, of the episodes and put them up. That'd be um, something. But it's just time, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The where's, the Hardy, where's the Hardy Books beer? That was a nice beer. How did that come about? How did you get your own beer going? Oh, so, I remember so, I got it into the shop when I was in Spire up in up in Dublin. A couple of a couple of things with that, right? First of all, yeah. my my, sis, my sister orchestrated that with a woman she was working with who does Brandon. She did like the Trooper, the Iron Maiden okay. beer, and, and so she would do it, Motorhead beer and a couple of these ones through the UK. And they did. There's another guy called Gavin Bacon, who uh, I haven't met since, and a few other yeah. lads. It was a MD, um, Donegal Drinks Distribution Company, MDS or something. Fuck, I can't remember. But yeah, these lads were on board and, and Rye River were, were brewing it. So effectively, it was like McGarrigal's, but there was a couple of pitfalls with it. I didn't really like the label on the bottle. Um, I think it should have been in cans. Cans yes. and cheap. Because, uh, you know, that, our demographic is lads who would be hitting the Pratsky. So if you, yeah. get, if, you, if you get a couple of, you know, half litre cans, hardy books, nice little slogan on the side of it, and uh, pump it out, man. And then you'd see them littered. You'd see our faces littered all over Spanish Arch and Galway and along the canal there in Dublin. Bad bastards, man. Always always pick up your litter, lads. Yeah, it was actually, it wasn't a bad beer now, in fairness. I think, oh, I think they were about two quid a bottle, weren't they? They were, yeah. It was more the yeah. novelty of seeing our lovely faces on the bottle. Uh, I drank many of them. Drink many of them now, Morris. You, you must have got a few free ones over, anyway. Oh, a good few of them. I filtered many a litre of that into piss, I tell you. <laughs> oh, God. And she was easy on the liver. She was yeah. easy on the liver. 
Talk to me a bit about music and what you're doing with music these days. Well, um, not not directly these days, but what you have been doing, we'll say, previous. Yeah, I did an EP a couple of years ago, and I thought, man, this is gonna this is gonna blow people's socks off. But uh, obviously, it's trying to get the word out on social media. It's tough. But I was gonna. The idea was to release to to put the word out on the Hardy Books page, but then myself and Todd off had a bit of a, a dispute over it. And after me being on up there for years, he was like, no, you're not on there anymore now. And uh, yeah, I think we I think we had a bit of a fallout over that. Yeah, I just don't talk to each other anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't I don't even know if he would come back and do another another series. I don't know what the story is with him. Like no one's really seen him and. Plays his, he plays his games and stuff and does his streams on, on YouTube, but I'm actually at the point where he needs to put it behind him, man, because culturally, I think the country needs people to bring the the country back into the fucking centre, back into, you know, just stop being so bloody serious and and just have a bit of a laugh again. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think the lockdown is really... I, I don't know if you heard this, but... Mike, my brother-in-law, co-writer and the director and producer and editor and all, you know, many hats. He uh, he got onto me, and he goes, "Oh, you love this, mate. You love this." So there's a couple, uh, Cameron Meachin and Danielle McHugh, a Scottish couple from Glasgow. Okay. They get they get their um, they're in watching a bit of Netflix, chilling. Maybe the volume was a bit too high. Next thing, the door is battered off the hinges. Their Alfredo dog, uh, Bolognese his name was, was grabbed by the collar and threw down the hall. And then they burst into their room, grab your man, force him on the floor, and say that they're in breach of COVID rules and forcibly arrest them, put them both in the cell. And it turns out they were watching Hardy books. What but, did they uh, do? Nothing, man. They, were, they were, must have been ratted out for... Uh, they probably had, like, Zambezi nights on or, or something really loud and... Uh, or maybe the Oxygen Festival episode at full blast on the Dolby surround. <laughs> and uh, the, probably the cops, I don't know how they would have found out, just came in and busted them up. And, yeah, so bad bad times, man, bad times. bad times. And what you're doing at the moment, the Hardy book on YouTube. Yes, that's my, that's my latest labour of love. Um, that's more of like a background into the cosmos of Castletown. It, Gives me as a writer more more room to explore the the unseen avenues and lane ways of Castletown, and uh, yeah, basically it took me a month to get the last part done, which I broke up into two bits. But I was very very satisfied with it afterwards. But yeah, a lot of work went into that. So uh, you can either check that out at Maloney's Digest on YouTube or the Hardy Books podcast. But uh, what do you think of it yourself? You had a good listen to it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought it was enjoyable. Yeah, it's different. Uh when you're trying to visualize everything because i'm not really it's kind of like a book really isn't it like, oh it is a in, book yeah. in, in the title like you know but it's uh my concentration levels aren't as good like i like to visually see something yeah but i understand what you're doing with kind of the way the world is and people are all into kind of listening to things at the moment with podcasts and things like that so yeah. well the have thing, you got I, many I, of them lined up yeah i started writing one the the, the recent chapter is basically about how Buzz McDonald's great, 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 way great, great granddad going back was the man who opened his first Irish bar on uh, the colony of Plymouth Rock after uh, escaping the the new mo- uh, Cromwell's new model army. So uh, he was a great man. It, just, it was after Sir Walter Raleigh had introduced the potatoes. He was like, I turn this into fucking pudgy no so well. So, yeah. That's to look forward to. So, I mean, there's a fair bit of research that has to go into it as well, because I was like, I've got to get my facts right here before I go waffling on. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good few parts. Like, there's, there's going to be, like, parts about, like, Eddie as a kid growing up and talking, you know, there's a fair few bits about school. Some some bits are basically shit that happened in real life and or rumours from around the town, but different names and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm just trying to get, like, the feel of the town the atmosphere for it so it's it's something that i i to be honest with you it's, it's it's a bit weird because it's the most excited i've been about the hardy books since we were doing the youtube stuff but this time it's uh it's quite difficult to get it out as a format but we'll see you know it's uh word of mouth is good and if i keep putting them out eventually people you know will be like oh man have you heard that's fucking hilarious 
Or other people are like, nah, I'm not into it, man. I'm not listening to that content anymore. <laughs> what the other? You know, so we'll see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. I have a few uh, fan questions here. Go on, so. Well, some of them are statements. This one is from Kieran McDermott. He says, ask him about Ballyfermot College with Chris. Well, I seems went on... to, he seems to know something there. I don't know what that is. Kieran but that's a statement, anyway. I think Kieran, Kieran McDermott, I think he's one of the, he, he was always a bit of a trendy boy who worked in uh, River Island. Is that is that him? And he, I have it, no he, idea. This was just from a Facebook group, Hardy Books Crack Posting. Kieran McDermott, I don't, I don't know, really, to be honest. Mm. Uh, yeah, man, see, I wasn't in college with Chris. There was one day where I came in to do this, uh, be this talk show kind of thing for this Bally Um it's like a kind of an opening day and, and the TV crew were doing like, they wanted someone to present it. So this was like 2007. So I came in and did that for the day. It was a bit of crack. And um, yeah, but like, yeah, I was, I was in Bally Firma for a year myself doing media and sh- sh- shy crack. It's all right. Like, you know, but uh, yeah. The next, I think one I'm, here, the next one here is uh, Nick Newton from Alabama says hi. That's just uh Hello Nick. That's just How you doing, mate? Fair play. Man of many words. The Mogmen in Roberts Hill want to know how the music is going. I think we covered that anyway. Yeah, the music, I mean, I, I just haven't really like I'm uh, I'm in I am i am going to have to move move places soon, so all my stuff is all boxed up. And um yeah, it's it's kinda of like when you've got no audience to play for, it's kinda of, I, I haven't I've only picked the guitar up like once or twice in the past couple, month and a half. But the music was going brilliantly. You know, I was, uh, I, was, I was doing gigs and, you know, cover sets, a few originals thrown in the mix and a bit of comedy in the middle. It was just like entertainment. And, uh, yeah, the gigs were rolling in nicely. And then, yeah, the kibosh was put on it then. No gigs, no music over there at the moment at all, no? Nah, nothing, mate. No. So it's like the same yeah. as anyone else, really. David O'Gara says that, do you remember the time he bought you a packet of Banshee Bones before a gig you had in Camden Street? Hmm. wonder where that was on Camden Street was that in the palace was it I think it was the palace yeah I'd say the old fucking memory has been a bit clouded since those days <laughs> fair, hey fur balls on the benchy bones man yeah. <laughs> I, vaguely, I vaguely remember it man I, I, it rings a, 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 there's a very distant bell I'll probably be lying down in bed tonight I'll be like oh the fucking banshee oh legend man <laughs> yeah so it, it'll at this current moment in time vaguely remember it yeah yeah you said you were delighted anyway Right. See, he knew he knew which corn snacks to to get. That's the end of the fan questions, anyway, and we just we'll wrap it up there, and just by asking you, what are your plans for the future? <laughs> Mate, you tell me. I was never very good <laughs> at planning, anyway. Uh, I'm just going to crack on with this Hardy book, and once once I have me uh, me own setup in the new gaff, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to start doing. I'm just going to. Get get to grips with the technical aspect. I find I find doing stuff like OBS it's quite difficult, and uh, I'm gonna have to just invest in a proper high end, you know, fucking Windows because I ain't gonna splurge out four grand on a Mac only yeah. to be told what permissions I'm allowed to do and not, you know, I'm like, look, Tim Cook, mate, you're a fu- you're a shadow of what Jobs was. Jobs knew the crack, and now you're fucking squeezing the sponge. You know what I mean? Don't be squeezing the Max Punch. The, only, I love the, the only thing about those Macs is though they're so smooth, like ah, they are. The you know, thing about them. they're aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Unless someone, someone out there wants to build me a Hackintosh, but even still, maybe build me a Hackintosh in a. I've got an old, I've got an old uh, desktop that's basically just a paperweight now. The graphics card went in it, and I took it up to these fucking Egypt around the corner it's my own fault if I'd just taken it to Apple and just took the hit of about 400 quid they, they would have just reflowed the uh, the graphics card but these lads man they broke the pins off the motherboard and then I took it to another place and it cost me 50 quid from just to take the uh, the hard drive out which was already wiped he goes oh here's the hard drive I'm like, oh, I was very nice of you to, to prove that you'd, you'd I mean it makes me wonder what else you're taking out yeah yeah but uh, yeah you know once the uh once the I, I have the I have my shit sorted out, I just start streaming and doing a bit more comedy and maybe 
fucking do some commentaries over stuff, I think, and, and, and definitely keep building on the the YouTube channel. YouTube is a difficult one, man. I, it's, it's difficult to get subscribers on there. It's, uh, I yeah, think, I'm finding that now at the moment as well. Like, it's really... Yeah. People will watch the stuff, but they won't subscribe, maybe, you know? Yeah, well, well look, anyone who's watching, subscribe to my channel, Maloney's Digest, and subscribe to, to Morris here at Cheap Ease. Because uh, it's it's you know for me it feels like I'm basically starting off from square one. I'm a bit like John Fashanti doing a solo gear. Great talented person, but without the chili peppers, people are like yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Are you into the music crack yourself, Morrissey? Well, I do. Uh, I normally do gigs, um, DJ and gigs in Fibbers. You probably know Fibbers. Oh, from Dublin. hey, do you, do you ever do stuff with your man Jason? Big on Pantera. Oh, you know Jay, do you? I fucking do, hey. I fucking yeah. do. Oh, sure. Listen, I, I met you, I think, in Club Hell one night as well with Jay. Yeah. Uh, I was good in, crack o- o- in O'Reilly's there, you were drinking a few pints upstairs. Yeah, that's right. That was just about, what, seven, six, seven years ago? Yeah. it's Unfortunately, it's not Club Hell anymore. Was they, it now? they changed it into a kind of a, a pop venue. You know, yeah. nothing lasts forever in this cold November rain. Yeah, as Axel Rose would have said. Yeah, Club Hell, that was good crack, man. It's good yeah. crack. Bit of Pantera. It's the only place where you can go into a nightclub and listen to something from a Use Your Illusions album. Yeah, I think Great I think crack. I got up and put a few tunes on that night as well. Uh, I I remember uh, fuck, what was it back in, <laughs> in like 2013? He was down in a place called Big's Bar down on the Keys. My mate Chris Gavigan, the henchman, was like, Martin, look, there's fucking three pints here tonight, like, in fucking Bigs Bar. It was literally around the corner from us. But the, the downside to the night was I was going into the um, the circuit court for a, for a an alleged triple assault. So I was going in for the arraignment the next day. But I think we are on the piss in there till about five in the morning. And nine the next day, I was, I was still drunk and bloated from the drink. And uh, when I, and, look, and the other handy thing is that was literally down the it was the bottom of of Gavigan Street on Montpellier Hill, so I was like sound. I get out of bed and walk down the road. And when the paparazzi were going, here he is, lads. I was like, oh fuck. But uh, <laughs> went in for the arraignment, came out the front door, and I was like, I gotta get out of here. So I had to jump in a cab, yeah. And they're like, where do you want to go? And I went, just drop me around the corner, mate. <laughs> Didn't want the cunts fucking chasing me, man. I tell you. Yeah, the, out of all the shit with the court, man, the, the 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 paparazzi bit was the most stressful aspect of it. Like, so any anyone who's been papped by people, I, I yeah, I can imagine the Kardashians and all those. It's just getting fucking. You can't even go through an airport without being absolutely plagued. Yeah. But uh, you're you're big into the wrestling crack, yeah. Big into the wrestling crack, yeah. Who who's uh, who's your your favorite? The Undertaker was it? Death Valley. I was no Steve Austin would have been my favorite, but uh, yeah, great great man for the beer. Yeah, it's it's declined a lot unfortunately over recent years. Like yeah, it's all PG now, man. You know. Yeah, I I, I um it's funny I was I was, uh, I, was I was telling the girlfriend that uh, today it was I was having a crack. We're on the bus and I said uh, we were talking about like temperatures. Oh yeah, we're talking about how there was a meme that was out on on the Irish, the Reddit Island the other day. It was like of Frodo Baggins, and it's like when you're American, when you ask your American friend the temperature, and they ask answer you in Fahrenheit, it's like, right then, keep your secrets, you know. And it was quite funny. And then we were talking about Fahrenheit, and I was like, uh, I was like, why don't they just have it all in Celsius, man? It's got you got your your, your below zero and above zero, and, and then it probably goes like 55 if you're in Death Valley. And I was like. Yeah, actually, I remember reading about The Undertaker as a kid going, oh, he's in Death Valley, of course he is. And I was like, but really, he's probably from, like, Austin or something. And she was like, yeah, didn't we talk about this before? I was like, yeah, I think we did. And then we looked it up, it was, it was Houston. I was like, it wasn't too far off. Houston, yeah. yeah. Texas, Paul, man, anyway. Paul Bearer, man, what, what killed Paul Bearer in the end? Was it uh, high cholesterol? I think, I think I think it was a heart attack, actually. Yeah. COVID, was it? It wasn't COVID, no. It was, <laughs> it was, it was before, before those times. Yeah. Are you a big fan of Seamus, man? Big fan of Seamus. Do you ever meet him? Uh, I, I haven't met him, no. I've met the other I- Irish guy that's big at the moment. I don't know if you've seen Finn Balor. Oh, I haven't seen him. I, no. I haven't been following it, but I, that was always like my dream as a, as a teenager. I was like, fuck, I'd love to be a, I'd love to be a wrestler, but it just didn't, didn't enter my mind. Like, looking back, should have just joined Irish Whip and done a bit of, threw a few boys around. Uh, myself and Seamus would have made a great, great tag team. 
when he when Seamus right. becomes like because all these guys go into movies eventually, maybe you could be a stunt double. Fuck that man, I'd be up there with him. We could call we could call it something like fucking whiskey and whiskey and rye, and just two <laughs> big fucking ginger lads throwing lads through windows and shit. Uh, Kane used to scare scare me when I was like, "Oh, Kane, man, you know." What he's the, he's the mayor of Knoxville now. No way. Yeah. Yeah, man. Isn't big show. Crazy? What, what was it? Big show. Seven two, wasn't he? Yeah, he still he still shows up every so often. The big show. Yeah, he's his own TV show now. He's like, yeah. Is, oh, that it, got cancelled after one series. Oh, man, it has so Netflix. much promise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that I, I, it probably relied on like how big he was compared to like everyone else. The Big Show Show. That's what it was called. They the put a lot of thought show, yeah. into that. Yeah, man, it was a Netflix original. Yeah. But it's funny because uh, none of his kids were massive because you'd, you'd think some of the genetics would have uh, carried over in, into the to the next generation there. Not that I watched it, but I just I seen it come up once and I was like, I, I, must, I must glance at that someday. I did watch one episode. Side splitting, was it? Oh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man, it was a pleasure to have you on, and thanks a million for your time. Hey, no worries, Murray. It's a pleasure. And listen, tell Jake the snake I was asking for him. <laughs> no bother. <laughs> See you later, Martin. Thanks. Thank you. If you enjoy the content on our channel, we'd appreciate a subscription. Thank you. Thank you.